This is Startup Storefront. Welcome to Season 5. For centuries, mankind has been obsessed with the possibility of immortality. After Walt Disney's death, reports of his body being frozen in liquid nitrogen spread like wildfire. The thought was that he could be brought back to life by future, more advanced civilizations. These reports turned out to be false, but it didn't stop people from thinking about the concept of living forever. While immortality is still science fiction, StoryFile has created the next best thing. By having subjects answer upwards of 1,600 questions, a subject's memories are preserved and created into an artificial intelligence so that future generations can hold a conversation in real time with the deceased. From helping teach social skills to kids with autism to leveling up corporate training modules, the applications of this technology extend way beyond just immortality. In today's episode, we speak with Heather, the founder of StoryFile. She explains how StoryFile is preserving history by interviewing Holocaust survivors, the applications of interactive adult videos, if you know what I mean, and the importance of keeping the human element in AI interactions. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Heather, co-founder of StoryFile. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. For people who don't know what StoryFile is, how would you (laughs) explain it? What is StoryFile? StoryFile is a new concept called conversational video AI. And it's where you produce videos, and those videos can have a conversation with people. Mm -hmm. So it's videos that talk back. And we went to your website, so there's this video with like William Shatner and some other sort of, I don't want to call them sad, but the angle of if I die, my family should be, can remember me and can talk to me whenever I want. And so you see these, uh, the quick story I'll give is like a grandparent or even your your co-founder's mother, I believe. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're at the funeral and then they play a video of her. And so in some way, it's like this legacy that lives on and then you can speak to it. And then in fact, they respond to the answer that you're getting. When you think about what you're doing is that the main vertical? Is that the main sort of biz? Because you could do a million things, right? So when I think about StoryFile and the technology, I can think of like professors. This becomes super easy for any like learning management, any Absolutely. training management, McDonald's, Absolutely. Burger King, Walmart, UPS. Mm-hmm. Super easy. Out the gate, go mm-hmm. record once. FAQs, customer service. So many. Anything. Anything where there's a question. You yeah. Know, and, and commonly asked questions normally. Like you mentioned professors and yep. anywhere. FAQs, porn. You can think service. about this in the porn world, and we can edit that in or out. But there's some applications here. You know, People it was so have... funny because I went to uh, where was I? I was at like one of those top ten universities back east, and I was giving a, a lecture. And the guy, we were walking back to the car, so he had to take me to dinner. And he says, "You know, I just have to ask: Has the porn co- industry like come to you yet?" Right. right. And I started cracking. I'm like, "No, but you know, they are." one of the first adopters for new technology, new technology yeah. in this country or in the world probably <laughs> for sure how do you, how did you like how do you see you got like your focus or is it still a, our a, focus a primarily testing? it's commercial it's large enterprise like walmart's a customer of ours okay and um, they use and it's the training yeah piece they of use it? the story file methodology or the technology for training okay. for onboarding employees they've got a great thing about, uh, they call it a financial mentor. So you have all these new store managers that are trained and you know, you spend two weeks training them. They go away and what do they remember? 10%. Right. <laughs> right. You know? They just go so, next, next, next. <laughs> so, you know, Walmart, like a lot of companies, have their own app. And so you just go on, your, on the app and if you have a particular, they call it a financial mentor. And if you have a particular question about the store, that something that, you know, my end caps are not selling, you know, how do I improve my marketing or merchandising or something like that. And there's a gentleman that actually does this in real life, but he gets a lot of calls and emails. So this is a way for them to just get an answer really quick to their question. No, 72 hours later, I get an answer via email or the guy doesn't have time to call or whatever. And then if you do want to have a conversation or you do have follow-up questions that they haven't dealt with in the story file, you, then you have an opportunity to talk to them in person. The question that I have about mm-hmm. this is how much time is spent on figuring out the questions that you ask the, mm-hmm. the people? Because I know that when you started, 
you were interviewing uh, survivors of the Holocaust, yes. right? And I read that you would you would have them sit down. It would be a week straight, mm -hmm. eight to five, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. and that would be the time that you'd interview them. And you'd inter ask them like over two thousand questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is in a very extensive portfolio of knowledge that that you are capturing. And I don't know if Walmart uh, mm -hmm. has the same requirements, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that there's a lot of prep work mm -hmm. in in having these questions lined up ahead of time. And I, I want to know your process in how you figure out which questions to ask and what gets left on the, the cutting room floor. Yeah, nothing gets left on the cutting room floor. That's the interesting thing is everything that these people have said, every answer is captured and put in the database regardless. But the process to develop the what we call the storyline, so the line of questioning, can take anywhere from four to six weeks or more. We partner very closely with the client, obviously. What we would like to do is just train the client in order to, so they can do this process on their own. We don't necessarily have to be the production house mm -hmm. all the time. So we, we take them through that. We, t you know, we talk to them about the questions that they've got. We talk to them about their curriculum. We ask their subject matters and their people, you know, what kind of questions? What are your top, just write down for me your top 25 questions you get asked every day. Then they have curriculum. You have to direct it. You, know, you have to ask a question that will get to them talking about that specific subject or that specific response. During the interview process, there are what we call follow-up questions that come up that you want clarifying questions. There's a lot of thinking through. It's sort of like the branching narratives that you see kind of you choose your own adventure. Like in the gaming industry, they use what's called branching narratives a lot. So it's, it's starting from a place where what do I see this conversation? How do I see this conversation going? And what are all the iterations of that conversation that someone could have? The reason that we did so many questions with, in particular with the Holocaust survivor is we were covering their whole life from beginning to end. And dealing with most of those questions had to do with maybe a five or six year period in their life. And then the rest of it was the impact of what that, what that meant to their families, to themselves, and mostly trying to get at how were they resilient enough to come back and just be productive citizens again after an experience like that? How did they do that? And they were so inspiring that you just keep asking questions about their lives. We have approximately 2,000 questions on the consumer product, which is Story File Life. Not many people would be able to answer all of them because they haven't had specific experiences. There's storylines in there for World War II veterans. Maybe you weren't a World War II veteran. There's things in there about divorce and adoption, you know, just different life cycle events, different things that a normal human being on this planet who's lived any given time has probably experienced, touched on, things like that. So you want to lay out all of those topics, all of those questions, and give people the option to either opt in to answering those or not. Mm -hmm. If they don't have anything to say about it, they skip it. It's a lot of research for most of the, the clients that we have, but it's a process that we train them to go through themselves and ultimately do for themselves. Do you guys fit in the SaaS business model? Yeah. Okay. And so are you training an AI to onboard the clients or is it very hands-on? There's an implementation the, person. The SaaS product that we have is called Conversa. Okay. And it's a platform that you go on and it helps you create your own conversational video module. So whatever your use case is, you lay that out. It helps you find the different questions, gives you hints and ideas, and kind of walks you through the whole step. And then it helps you publish it at the end, whether you want to embed it in your website, you want to share it, you know, put it on your LinkedIn, share it on all your different sure. social medias. You want to use it in a, another training module in your learning management system, et cetera. So. So there is like training modules that you can pull on top of it, or like questions, and then if they get it wrong, they're sent back to the, Yeah. Like, oh, so I would have guessed that too, but actually let's reconsider this answer to this question. If it's a learning module, they're like an interactive video. Yeah, if it's a learning module, it's a component of the curriculum, right? So it's, it's within that, the general curriculum, and it's normally someplace that people can practice having conversations or asking or getting more information. 
see, the thing is, people learn probably six times deeper than when they just read something, if they are the ones asking questions. Like you and I were talking about curiosity earlier before. Curiosity, it, it's actually a human trait that you can see in, in babies. You know, that's how we learn. And how do we learn when we get to be adults and we have language skills? We start asking questions. Human beings are trained to just get information and ask their own question. You learn deeper when you do that. So it's really kind of taking those curri that curriculum, having an expert that you can personally talk to, you can ask your own question, and you get their answer. They talk to you. So. That's the pitch. Right. That's the okay. So in my head, I'm thinking about this like this is a real true story. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe eight years ago, if I was a Google employee, I get hired at Google. I go through all these online courses. And so as you know, they have professors, the professors come mm -hmm. on and do this video and there's this interactive component to the video. And so these videos aren't like if you're a coder, they're not meant to teach you how to code. They're more of like, this is emotional intelligence. Right. And so there's this emotional intelligence module. Mm -hmm. And it's built in a way where it's a professor at the beginning explaining to you this thing. And then it goes, okay, think of a sad time in your life. And then you, you do that. And then it goes, and it flashes all these things at you and it asks you how many of these do you remember? And then because mm -hmm. you're sad, you remembered X of them. Mm -hmm. Then, then it was like, think of a really happy time in your life. Same scenario. How many of these things did you remember? Uh, you remembered less than X because you were happy. Mm -hmm. And so then they show you, you see, this is emotional intelligence. But in that, so if I'm Google, right, if mm. I, and, I have, and I have already spent all this money to develop this, mm. what you're saying is your pitch is the human being. So Google, your employer, Walmart, your employer, my product, StoryFile, is much more effective because for the first time ever, your employee is able to interact with me, mm -hmm. with, with our product. Exactly. And that's, that's interesting. So okay. they're able to ask that, that professor. Themselves, I mean, yeah. If you had done that scenario, mm -hmm. I guarantee you you'd have five questions afterwards uh, to yeah. ask that. I mean, I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. To ask that professor. So, but I'm not a Google employee who's just chasing a paycheck <laughs> and uh, and some duck con fee. <laughs> so we're a little different. But yeah, it engages you for sure. You know, you you remember that conversation. You remember, even if it's somebody else asking a question. Like I'm sure you've been to lectures with maybe a book launch or whatever, and and then it it's opened up to Q and A afterwards, and the Q and A is never long enough. First of all, right. there are always like more. Five questions. Are always one more. more. One more question. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last but one. even if if somebody else asks your question, mm -hmm. you're going to engage more than if you were just while you were listening to that lecture. The energy changes in the room when you open it up into a Q and A. Do you see support moving in this? So, so there's yeah. this whole new in the support. news right now is the AI support. It's mm -hmm. like all over Instagram where people can't believe it because it's like just an AI. Mm -hmm but you're just, you're talking to it and it's working and there's no need for a human to be on the other side of that computer. And so let's, let's think about us texting. That's all automated now. Actually, Home Depot has a really good version of it too. But you're texting. But you're texting. And so right. do you, do you view, or maybe this matters. So maybe if I'm a five-star hotel group, I think I'm just thinking out loud, right. that customer service should be a human being or the appearance, right. the illusion of a human being. When you're able to be more personal and you're able to put an actual human face on it, you'll be more successful. And you'll get a lot more customer loyalty, mm -hmm. happiness, satisfaction. Everything will be higher. So we have companies coming to us and say they actively tried to take the human out of it for years. Right. And you're saying and don't now, do that. No, no. They're coming to us and say we, we want to put the human back in. So fast. Because it's, just, it's not working. Is it seamless? Does it feel seamless? Yeah. And it'll get even, even, even more. Better. Yeah. I mean, we've pushed it a lot in the last six years. It's, I mean, I've been doing this since 2010. Same so company I came up, or no? I came up with this concept for the Holocaust survivors in 2010. Skype wasn't a thing. ARS, <laughs> ARS wasn't a thing. Wasn't a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. speech recognition wasn't a thing. But you could see the trajectory and, and where things were going. We had a use case. These people were dying. They impact society in such a significant way because for 60 years they had been talking about their experience. So why not try to replicate that? Was your family a survivor? or like no. why, why that problem? I was an immersive exhibition designer, and for some reason I, I fell into doing a lot of Holocaust and genocide exhibitions. I was so inspired by these people, and I was learning so much from them. 
And one day it occurred to me, my grandchildren will never be able to have the same conversations I'm having. You know, and I thought that was a shame. Especially now that people don't even think it happened. Right. Which is even crazier to think about. That's crazy. But, you know, I went to one organization, um, the USC Shoah Foundation, and they're the leader in um, audiovisual testimony. They have the largest archive in the world of anything. And I said, okay, it has to sit with you. You guys have to take this on because if it's going to have a life afterwards, I could, I could have done it for a couple of museums, maybe. I mean, it was awfully expensive to do. But if it was going to have a life, it had to sit with them. So right. my partner with them, and then we found, happened to find another USC institute, which I didn't know was a USC institute when I found them. Then the three of us partnered on that. And then when I was out in the public, what we, were, what we had to do was get people to talk to these, and these Holocaust survivors and have those conversations because we needed data. So you needed to train the AI. Right. AI just doesn't happen. It's, it's a pretty manual process, actually. And so at the time, I was getting questions from the public like, this is amazing. Can I do this with my grandfather? Can I do this with my aunt who was just diagnosed with cancer? Can I do this for my parents? Can I do this with the founder of our company? You know, and I kept getting that question over and over and over. And finally, you just say, okay, what would it look like if I made this ubiquitous? You know, I had teachers that would come up to me and say, I teach autistic children, and I would love to use this so that they can practice socializing. They can practice having conversations. Languages, how much would you like to practice having a real conversation with someone who actually speaks the language? Right. And ask whatever you want to ask. Training Make sure men that you how to talk to women on a date. Well, dating. In today's world. Dating. All these COVID all the, humans. But get to know this person before right. you actually go on a first date and waste three hours or four hours of your life. Right. And you can get a lot. It, the reason that we never went with audio, and it, trust me, it would have been a, a lot easier to do, we stuck to it for with video because... You need to look into someone's eyes when you're talking to them. You need to read that. You need the human human being can tell so much from an individual just by looking through into their eyes. They know if they're lying. They know if there's something strange. They just know they know if something's off. And there needed to be the body language because even in your voice and your intonation, most of communication is body language. And that includes your voice and intonation, which you would get with the audio, but you wouldn't get the visual. You wouldn't get the body language. So hence why we kept with video and kept doing, you know, That's into so it. That's so fascinating. And Instead then, of saying, okay, we'll do the easy right, route. Just, and do, just the audio. To, just the audio. And was the path to that, so at the beginning, you're trying to solve this problem, but I can imagine, so like the, the my grandmother was just diagnosed with something, I'd like mm-hmm. a video. That's touching, but it doesn't make money. In the sense of, okay, okay, person that just explained the sad story to me, are you willing to pay X to make this happen? And the answer to that is probably no. And so... No, they are. They are. Oh, yeah. And what, what is that X it's, then? It's, think about all of the, the people. There are 90 million people on Heritage.com. What is Heritage.com? It's like Ancestry.com. Okay. Ancestry oh, has... Like ancestry. Me, ancestry. Yeah, Ancestry.com okay. has probably 40... Are you trying million? to tell me, are you concluding that they're on there to find out who their grandparents are? They want to know or, or who did, their family was. They, like they want to know as much history. as they can. I think they can. want to know where they're from. Yeah, they want to know where they're from, but they because want to know the story. Because they've been lied to. Someone said that you're <laughs> half. <laughs> someone to. said you're half. This happened to my wife. Yeah. So my wife, I meet my <laughs> wife. Italian. Her name is <laughs> Natalia Capolini. Capolini. Okay. Their whole family, forever since I've known them. Oh, we're Italian. And I'm uh-huh. like, oh, interesting. Okay. I'm from Peru. There's not a hair of me that thinks I'm 100% Peruvian. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, you was so many, yeah. just look at a uh, history book. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, this isn't that hard. But, okay, I love the pride thing. Like, the Irish <laughs> and uh, the Italian thing in Boston mm-hmm. makes no, made no, no sense to me ever. <laughs> so, of course, 23 Me comes out. My wife does it. She is 47% Irish. She's more Scottish than Nick. She's Welsh of some variety, French, and then mm-hmm. a touch of Italian, which I'm like, which is fine. It just means your family had sex in Italy. Mm-hmm. Took a last name, learned how to make pasta that her mm-hmm. grandfather still talks about today, mm-hmm. and moved to America. Mm-hmm. For some reason, though, they do the 23 me, and there's this like shame around, like, oh, I'm not as Italian as I thought. 
Well, and so anyway, it's your, but it's your identity. I, you grew what, up with but, the, you grew the, up with a certain identity, but, and then to find uh, out it's a false it's narrative. Not, though. But people are curious about where they came from. Okay. If you don't know where you came from, yeah. How do you know where you're going? How do you know who you are? I don't think how do you know really where knows, you're going? But I think the point I'm I'm touching on is. I don't think everyone, anyone really knows. And what's interesting is that there's an assumption that they know. And I think these, these websites but they, are But there's an assumption. Oh, but, okay. So, yes, the 23andMe can help that. And then the, other, the flip side of that is then you start finding out all the stories. And then you fi- start finding out who these people were. Wouldn't it be great if I learned that, like, the grandfather that came over to this country and da 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 what if I could actually talk to him and know his story, that he know who he was right. as a person, like, get to know him, really ever. get to know him. In five, 10 years, everybody on this planet like where we're going will here. have a story file. In 50 years, anybody that finds out about or wants to know anybody can get to know them. I can get to know you in Peru. I can get to know your whole entire family if I wanted to, if it was public. That's amazing. Is that it's, what you're solving for? Yeah. Like that. So when you go to bed at night, when, when you're talking to your board, when you're raising capital, is that it? Because it's interesting, right? Where you, so, so we, you call talk it about, a, we call it an archive of humanity. Okay. Um, but it's not this Walmart not, stuff. The Walmart stuff is just the money-making not, enterprise. Yeah. It, interestingly enough, the enterprise use case, although it took years to develop the, the SaaS platform, the use case is easier to build a business on. The other use case, the archive of humanity, that will come. Here's the catch-22. You know, you've got to have people that understand that you can talk to video. So how do you do that? The easiest way is to get people using it at work, being forced to use it, being forced to talk to these you know, new students come into a class and the professor has a story file because they don't want to have office hours. This is a really good story. Okay? So then those kids start using it. Mm-hmm. Then you learn, okay, I can do this for myself. You train the human. Because otherwise it's too difficult to start with the general public and change behavior. It takes longer. So hence, if it takes longer, it's going to take more, mu- more funding. If you start with the business case, but it's tied you to build a company. North Star. And then you move, you slowly branch okay. out, you slowly I'm gonna, This out. is controversial. <laughs> Why not then do porn? I didn't say Think I about all I didn't say, the I, did I ever say that we wouldn't do porn? I don't know did if you do. I haven't, I haven't, yeah. Is it public? I can, it would be anyone can, anyone can, I, anyone can <laughs> license. Anyone can license the technology. And they could talk If you it. can license the technology, you could do a story it. file with any of your, your stars, your people like whoever you yeah, want wh- whoever yeah how many times have you walked out of a movie and you've had a question for the director for the set designer for the for the visual effects for the this is why i don't watch movies actor. actually because i'm just left with questions that i can't have answers to right and then you go down you you might some people most people go down google you know type it in their question and go down a rabbit hole eight hours later they haven't found the answer so what do you, you know, you've wasted your time. Why can't you just ask the person? Why can't I stop the documentary and in the them. middle of the documentary? And just like I can do the, the, the yeah. history of the person and what their name is and mm-hmm. their whole da da yeah. I want to just ask them a question right then and there. <laughs> you can do that because your, your voice, your, your TV, yeah. your remote control is voice activated now. Right. So, so you theory. could do that. Yeah. Okay. So then there's another part of that where... Your AI would know what question to ask also as you train it, as it gets more intelligent. There's a part of you that, so if there's 2,000 questions for an onboarding person, right? And so that, that would mean like, let's say we're doing this interview right now and there's somebody listening and your AI was in the background running, there'd be a part of that AI that would say, Susie in Texas or human X, somebody is thinking this is the question to ask. We're working on AI right now that can, is generative, so you can generate questions based on the transcript and you can do it in pretty much real time but for the most part human beings are pretty predictable there are a lot of questions that are set that's why i asked the porn question by the way because i know everyone watching this listening (laughs) to this is going to be like i have an interesting thought it's probably around porn is diego going to ask the question and then if i don't okay you really want to get into how many 
porn, I don't even know what you call it, videos have you watched, and you've afterwards wanted to ask the individuals that were in the video questions or had a conversation with them or gotten to know them in a personal. So if you're asking me directly. Yeah. So the answer is almost all the time. Okay. Because to me, it's interesting. It's then like, there you go. Like, I want to know, like, <laughs> like, for example, someone watching this video might say, right. who else is in the room? They can't okay. see the oh, two yeah. other people in the room. Great they can't question. see the lighting. Great question. Right? They can't. And so when yeah. I think about porn, it's almost like there's probably an Owen and Lexi in that room. How much, how much of it is or really? Or are there drugs organized? and alcohol? Or is there a liquor cabinet mm -hmm. that's now empty? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think there's like this, uh, it, it comes from a place of concern. How do you feel about what you're doing? How do you feel about what you're, you're doing? doing? Yeah. Like, what do you do after or, this? Well, you uh, asking yeah. that question brought up an interesting point of, mm -hmm. I've never had that thought. I've never had that, that like mm -hmm. the end of the video and I have questions because, <laughs> because I've, <laughs> maybe you just know it's all well, make believe it's, and it's not, yeah, <laughs> nothing in it is real. You, so yeah, I'm not, I true. don't really care. I've been on <laughs> sets. He's been yeah, on I've sets. Been on, so he... no, not a porn set, but I've been oh, on right. a lot of other sets. And, right. but right. the reason, I think the reason why I've never had that is because what, something you touched on earlier is that I'd never been introduced to the idea. Mm. So I didn't know that, that you could do I it. Could. And so right. like once, I think once you are introduced to the idea, then all of a sudden you're going to be asking that of everything. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, yeah, now that I have that in my head, now that mm -hmm. I've been introduced to that concept, now maybe I will go out throughout my life. Like I'm going to go see Book of Mormon later tonight, the play. Mm -hmm. And ah, it's like, you're going to love it. And I'm, well, I'm sure I'm going to have questions or like follow up yeah. questions. Or, and oh, then so many questions about be? the Mormon. <laughs> so yeah. many questions. How great would that be if, if like you could have either yeah. Matt and Trey who yeah. wrote it uh, answering questions or yeah. actual Mormons answering yeah. questions like, okay, exactly. well, this was right. This was mm. not, you know, yeah. this could be uh, just the start of a much bigger interaction mm -hmm. that you have with everything in your life. Think about if, if Wikipedia was was verbal, like you could just ask a question and then you really get to know those individuals instead of having to go through and read their whole thing. And it's more expedient, right? It's more efficient. But it's also, it's meaningful because it's they're real human beings that you're talking to. For example, have either of you, God forbid, um, ever had either you have been diagnosed with something or a loved one has been diagnosed with something. Yeah, my a mom. disease. Yeah. Okay. When you found out, yeah. What was one of the first things you did? So it was different for me. I don't know. I don't know what the normal answer is, but for me, it was more of um, I flew home and I wanted to understand mm -hmm. it. So okay. I, I was like, you wanted to understand it. I went to the doctor with her. Right. Yeah. You wanted to understand. You wanted answers. I right? wanted it. Well, you wanted to talk to somebody more deeply that than you that. Thought. I wanted answers that weren't. Uh, covered. So I knew like if you're the one getting the bad news, you go mm. to an emotional place right away. Right. And so I wanted an answer that didn't have the layer of, uh, yeah. I might die tomorrow that makes sense. and it's going through my filter, words are coming out and those that words are being sense. told to my children. I so I just needed like, I needed the un, unedited right. raw details of what it is. Right. So I can make my own assumption. That's that If was. you could have talked to someone who had gone through exactly what she was diagnosed with, would that mm. have helped you? No. Not necessarily. No, because I think this is where I'm an outlier in this. And so mm. I don't want to derail the conversation. But I think, <laughs> no, I think for me personally, fine. like you said, the human being is predictable. Mm. And so most human beings are predictably emotional. Mm. And so to, for me to talk to someone who's predictably emotional is of no value. If, if I could have talked to a doctor and the doctor could have said, this is the diagnosis and this is the thing and this is what the lab results said and this is what it means in English, then I'd have been like, cool. And then from that conversation, I would have called four of my friends who are doctors and uh -huh. I would have said, here are the PDFs. Okay. Talk me through it. So it's a but little bit different. But they haven't, but those doctors haven't actually experienced what your mom is going through. No. Or, or have been diagnosed with that personally. C correct. If you had been able to talk to someone who maybe was diagnosed 10, 15 years ago with the same situation, it helps people. For example, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. One of the first things, aside from my first reaction, which was, oh, that makes sense, <laughs> you know, and then my second was, what am I going to experience? What what's going to happen? What do I what can I expect? Yeah. Now, a doctor couldn't tell me that because I'm sitting there talking to this doctor and I know that they've never gone through that. I don't they don't have multiple schools. They might have seen a lot of patients. Yeah. They might be able to tell me some things, but I don't know that because I'm not talking to somebody who's actually lived it. Yeah. I want to talk to someone who's lived it. I want to know how did you tell your children? How did you wake up every morning? thinking 
that the worst was going to happen. You know, what, how do you cope with that? Yeah. How do you, 10 years on, you're fine. H- how did you, what, what, what did you like do? Moment, what, yeah. You know, so many questions. Yeah. That's a really good use case that you're so bringing up. We all need to ask more questions yeah. in our lives and learn from each other. Is that why this company makes more sense for you too, in some way? Is that's why this company makes Yeah, like you do this every day. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want people to get answers. I want people to be able to get to know people. I want people to be able to get to know family members, coworkers, possible dates, you know, if they yeah, can yeah, yeah. if think about it, if you could talk to somebody five individuals before you chose who you want to actually go on a first date with, yeah. I almost 99% could tell you that that person will be very different than the first person you would have chosen had you not talked to each one of those individuals. Because you're basing it on what? You're basing it on the pictures that they took or like their bio or like a video that they vanity, did. Vanity metrics. You know, yeah. an the... intro video to their, that they did on their thing. To me, that, that almost falls into a different category. When we're going on dates, we're trying to build a connection. Mm-hmm. And a connection is both ways, whereas I view Mm -hmm. this as like a one way. So like you can have on your dating profile, like your story file Mm -hmm. and the person viewing it will have that information, whereas I might I won't have any part of that conversation. So you don't know that, though. What if I chose out of what if I talked to five individuals and I talked to their story file and I chose you mm -hmm. and then I pinged you? And the app told me, oh, this person's interested, whatever. Then you would go on and you'd talk to my story file. If you were interested at that point, then you could choose. So then it's just like a, a, a springboard right. into, into like. It, now, don't actual... get me wrong. I don't personally think that is going to take the place of whether or not I meet you in person and we have chemistry or not. I'm just saying, give yourself a little bit more information going into a situation, a better chance, maybe of finding someone that really is not going to waste your time or really, you know, you might not be interested in because you pretty much would know that if you asked somebody a few questions. Do you ever talk to any of these tech giants about how they view sort of the future of video and and is there like a shared vision? Because in a sense of what you're saying is like, like when Google first came out, mm. it was put, just put words into web. Mm. And what you're saying in some way is words are cool, but the human wants to interact. And so now let's, I don't want to say Web3 this, but it's almost like let's level up a bit. Oh, it is definitely and, Web3. And yeah. we see voice being activated, mm-hmm. right? So we know voice is moving in a direction and everyone mm-hmm. has an Alexa, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And so now the whole thing is just make Alexa look like somebody and then do that actually universally. Be, well, actually be a human. Be a human Have being. Siri be a human. Right. Have you got any insight from these companies around how they view it? Even though I've been in this world for 10 years, Mm -hmm. 12 years, Mm -hmm. it's still so new to so many people. I think that over the last six, eight years, we've all been told, for example, okay, you can use avatars and you can use photo real avatars and they're just as good and you can replace the human. So I think a lot of companies and a lot of enterprises really bought into that and they still take work. They're not as easy as most people think they are to to really do well, which is the same for conversational video modules. It is a bit of setup, but it's fine. It's not any more than you would do if you were doing a chatbot. So it's just getting people to realize you don't need to do the avatar. There are places for avatars. Like, let's say I want to know where to find a three-quarter inch bolt in Home Depot. I can have a conversation with an avatar. In that case, completely emotional. I, I know it, yeah. you know, I don't need a human being to tell me where it is or whether right. or not this Home Depot has it. It's Harry the Home Depot wizard. I do, yeah, <laughs> Just. I, that can be an avatar. But if you want That's to have fun. a conversation or get to know someone and you want it to be, in a, you want to get to know them, you want it to be personal, you want people to connect with it, then you need to use a human being. So, yes, I think that we have to educate companies and enterprise and move them to say there are certain use cases that that's great for but then there's another option and in some cases you might want to use this option in other cases you might want to use the other. when you say this to these companies is there like an aha moment or a moment where they're like oh yeah why are we using an avatar or do they get it 
I think the one thing that they think that they can't do with conversational video with our our system is update it on a regular basis and okay. and really quickly. Okay. Which is not true. You can. Because it's an input. Yeah, would, yeah. you can. Okay. But it's just as easy for me to turn on a camera in front of my desk yeah. and say it to you right. as it is to find the find it in the program, type it in, and then enter it. Let's wrap on this. So I don't want to give the training version, but let's pretend hmm. like, let's say Nick here. Nick, we're going to go ahead and Nick signs up. Nick, what's what's the process, right, of, of all of Nick's family members want to remember Nick when he's this young man. And so you're talking about the consumer as the, the story consu- file life. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what's just, required of him? You just uh, sign up. You, you know, online. you decide kind of how many questions you want to start with. Okay. Um, there are different packages. That's all. You choose your questions that you want to answer. There's starter scripts. You could just do those if you choose. Um, you do it. You record yourself answering all of those questions you get a link basically and you can do whatever you want you can embed that link or share it with your family you can invite members and invite us like what we call a family family circle to log in and actually interact with you so that actually ties into a question i had about the actual process of recording it because i Mm -hmm. saw a photo of when you were interviewing the holocaust survivors Mm -hmm. and the rig that you had was as big as this room like six (laughs) thousand led lights like you don't even need to you don't even need to do that anymore actually i can capture the same amount of data with minimum seven cameras and uh five depth sensors now okay Uh, the lighting is key the lighting is key it's gotten so much. I mean, the data you can capture is ridiculously sure. detailed. But that's only if you really want to future-proof mm-hmm. that image. Like the, the 3D so hologram. I, if, yeah, if I might want eventually... Museums do this because, you know, 25 years from now, they don't know what their museum is going to look like. They don't know what, you know, display technology is going to come about. They ha- are going to have to compete, and you'll never have an opportunity to get that data again, so you might as well future-proof it as much as you can. We're really working hard to um, advance the processing of that data so that you can actually in real time produce maybe an AR version. Like you could produce an AR version and you could literally project me on the end of the table and have a conversation with me. It's a lot to process. That's all. They take sure. massive computing power, but it's getting better and it's getting easier. But so put it, like yeah. a webcam on their, like, their I'm just laptop. So, phone yeah, so most people... I like personally like to suggest that a different generation interview a different inter- generation. Yeah, sure. And what, the, why? Just curious. Hmm? Why is that? Because what have you found that, 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 what about that works? Because first of all, it's great for you because <laughs> mm-hmm. you get to learn about that person. You bond with that person. You get to know them in a completely different way mm-hmm. than you would expect. The things you thought you, you can go in, saying, I know everything about my mom. I guarantee you, you will hear stories that you have never heard. I mean, it's fascinating. It's really interesting. And then you can ask also um, input follow-up questions if you want, if you're doing the interview. Um, like things you, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, I've never heard that story. It, tell me more. You can add that. Whereas if you're just interviewing yourself and doing it yourself, that might not be something you'd think about. It's just an amazing experience. And it's an amazing experience for you to go through because you think about things and you think about your life in a different way when you go through it and you're answering all these questions about your life and thoughts and decisions that you made. And it's a really unbelievable experience to have to go through it. Do you ever give them prompts on questions to ask? Because there Mm -hmm. are some questions that are inherently more interesting than others. Yeah, there are what we call hints. Okay. So we say think about this or go into this. And I mean, do either of you have children? No. No. Not yet. So we have people that are interviewing their their children at different points. Like they'll do the same script with them like every five years and then every 10 years. That's cool. Yeah. And then their children at 16 or 18 or 24 will be able to go and talk to them 
at 16. Yeah. It'd be really cool. It's like so you're, you're going through your yeah. rebellious phase and, <laughs> and your parents don't get it. And then you go back and talk to your teenage parent yeah, self. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a no, cool it'd be concept. Really, it'd be cool to, to see how you've mm. evolved too. Yeah. As a person over the years. There's, it's but. so funny you say that there's, um, this happened recently. So my wife went to a school and I think like every fifth grade or something they have, they write a letter to themselves when they turn uh, 30. Yeah. yeah. And so Natalia, yeah. my wife, gets a letter in the mail. She's <laughs> 30 now. And so That's the letter so cool. came back, and it's like the five-year-old version of her. Aww. And she's just reading. I love it. Lot, or like the fifth-grade version of her. Yeah. I love it. And it is so funny. It's like, you know, she Yeah, she would have been like 11 or 12. It was like probably. the cutest thing. Yeah. And she talks about her future. And what's crazy about it is like she's not, she was kind of right. Yeah, like she's, she's, not like, off. she's like, I'm going to go to school in Boston mm -hmm. and I don't particularly want to pay attention to the boys. Like, I'm just interested in creating mm -hmm. and I just hope people are nice to me. And like, Aww. I don't need many friends. It's I love just it. like this crazy thing. And it's like, I that's kind of what happened. I, mean, I love no it. No one knows you better than yourself. Yeah. But it's like shocking. That, it, it is. It, like at least the, I the guess maybe it's, maybe it's not, it, but, um, the, the, but it's yeah. in letter form. Well, and so but also she, is, she was form. foreseeing something, right? So she was almost, it makes sense. If you happen to believe in kind of manifesting, yeah, then what you're always told you you have to see that and who you're going to be and what's going to happen, and then you just you kind of it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. You just make it happen, right? Yeah, that you, way. you head that way. Yeah, it's a perfect way to wrap. So, where do you <laughs> see this ending? Yeah, <laughs> for story file for Heather. First of all, a conversational video in some capacity is going to be something that people interact with on a daily basis. Everyone. That's the new world. Yeah. So. I mean, what's funny is that as you say that, I can almost think about this time in today's world where people are on video, right? So we're on yeah. Instagram. We're kind of creating it already, mm. but we're not piecing it together correctly, I guess, or in the way that you see the future. Not, the in, a, not in a conversational, but also right. this is about the real you. Mm -hmm. And it's getting to know that person again. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, we have personas on Instagram totally. that might not be... Yeah. Who we really are. Yeah. So it's who you really are and who people really are. Well, Heather, thank you. Thanks for coming on your podcast. Thank you. Yeah, I really podcast, appreciate it. Sharing your story. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over 100 episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.